uh, Pasha Mukherjee Mukherj is, uh, <laughs> is with us um, this morning for this. So, Pasha, will you be on a picket line today? I will not be. I will actually be spending my day revising for a mandatory exam, which we don't get any extra time. We only get four days to do these exam revisions. Um, and actually, I've been spending the last six months revising three hours every day after work for this mandatory medical exams. And this is not just the case for myself. This is the case for many other doctors who do spend extra hours outside of the working hours revising for these exams, preparing and, you know, constantly upskilling themselves, which, as you know, we're not compensated for. Gosh, so that's a new... Um, actually, I haven't heard that argument being made about the cost of exams being thrown into the, this industrial action. Uh, Steve Barclay saying he's urging the unions to end their relentless strikes and points to the fact that uh, those doctors who started hospital training Training this year will get 10.3% pay rise. The average junior medic, 8.8%, and consultants will get 6%. But generous reforms to their pensions. You say that's not good enough, even though a million appointments being cancelled as a result. Well, the cancellations and the delays for the appointments has been going on since before the strike started. And I think that's where the honesty needs to be you know, transparency. There needs to be some transparency about that. We've been seeing uh, delayed appointments and really long waiting lists from before the strike started since COVID. Yes, but this one million figure relates specifically to the, the strike action days that's mm -hmm. been missed due to doctors going on strike. I think it's been seven days for junior doctors, two days now for consultants. Mm -hmm. Unprecedented striking. And I think that's why we, we should have really acted on this sooner and we should have, uh, you know, the government should have really acted on it and been a bit more, you know, uh, negotiative towards this whole thing um, than, you know, it's not just our responsibility. Ultimately, the government are in charge of the NHS. We're just employees. But are we any closer since the last time we spoke to coming to an agreement? I think... We're hoping that uh, things are moving in the right direction. We have reballoted, and yet again, 70% of junior doctors in this country have reballoted for a further six months of those who are members of the union. Yeah. Uh, well, no, actually, 70% of the whole whole country in terms of the junior doctor workforce. Okay. Yeah. So you know, we, we could be seeing a further strike action for a further six months if that, those figures are not closer to what we, we, we would be asking for. And, and we've spoken to you before on the programme and, and we talked about, you know, the, the Hippocratic Oath that you make and, and your commitment as a sort of vocation to treat and look after patients. This must be a very, very difficult day for you to not be able to look after patients who are very, very unwell and, and, and you know, those services being impacted. Well, ultimately, even the emergency services, GP practices, they're still covering these shifts with other doctors and, uh, you know, locum shifts, things like that. And we've just seen, like, you know, doctors charge £7,000 for a shift. And actually, the cost of, uh, you know, covering these shifts is costing the NHS, costing uh, the government far more than it would be if they would just give the hourly rate per doctor, per junior doctor or even consultants, yeah. what, what's been asked for. Uh, often, uh, people like the health secretary, they make out um, this is not just about you, this is about your colleagues within the health service and uh, any huge pay rise to doctors would be, um, would be unfair compared to the pay rises other people are getting. Well, what is the uh, cooperation like from, from other colleagues or what way do you think they view the doctors going on strike? I think, generally speaking, from my experience, I can only speak from my experience, it's been positive in terms of the fact that this is not just doctors getting a pay rise, it's about stopping this brain drain that we're experiencing as a country in terms of losing doctors, losing doctors that are trained in this country yep. under this system who are unfortunately going to other countries. And this has a widespread effect on the NHS, on each services, and this impacts the, our colleagues as well. It impacts the working relationship with, with nurses, with other colleagues that are allowed health professionals as well. So. I would like to say that, from my experience, it's been supportive. From yeah. Colleagues. Now, I'm interested. I asked you that question, and you were answering everything very, very well. And then you became very passionate. And we weren't talking about money. We were talking about the brain drain and educating people to go off uh, elsewhere. So really, there is a wider issue here as well, which, which obviously you feel strongly about. I think it's it's so it's it's misunderstood in terms of. Um, the effect that it really has on the patient in terms of having those cultural barriers when it comes to maybe speaking to 
doctors who have been trained in a foreign land, for example, whereas if they were to, you know, interact with doctors who have been trained in this system, there's much more cultural significance and there's a much more ease in terms of that communication. And this shows up in our exams as well, in terms of how foreign doctors will perform in exams, which they need to do to essentially progress in, the, in this system. And th there is a cultural difference and that, that really impacts in the way they practice overall. Um, and it is really sad that uh, we're, we're losing thousands of doctors each year. It does mean that the impact, the impact ha that it has on the remaining doctors is, yeah. I would say, is multifold. And, and, you know, as a result, we're having to, you know, squeeze in these appointments. Uh, I, for yeah. one, I'm a GP trainee and I'm, I struggle with the idea of having to do 10 minute appointments just because we, so we can fit in these extra patients to see them, essentially. It's draining emotionally to try to do everything, document, yes, yeah. talk to patients, and care and about them, targets. everything in, that, in yeah. that space of time. And, you know, doing your lunch times, you're, 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 you're going through all this hordes and hordes of admin that we need to do, the defensive practice we have to do, mm -hmm. and that relieves so little energy at the end of the day to do anything else. And... I mean, for me, I'm, I'm revising for an exam and I'm completely drained. I've been putting in three hours extra on top of work every day since April mm. towards this exam that, you know, and that's why I'll be doing these strike days. Well, I, I really think, um, Pasha, that it's really interesting to hear all sides of this story and get an insight into the reality of the work that you do. People can have their opinion on this or not. I uh, have spent nearly three weeks in, in hospitals over the past year and I have my own views about this and the system and agency staff and replacing radiologists and various people in the, in the bigger sphere of things, uh, phlebotomists, goodness knows what. It's not just about doctors and nurses, so it's very, very important that it is. But it's a big debate. Um, but you would say that we haven't really edged any closer towards a finalisation, a solution on this, a settlement on this. I would say that it's moving in the right direction, but we really hope that the number is closer to, well, what we're trying to say is that we've had a 26% regression since 2008-2009 we just want to be valued the same as doctors were 10 years ago. And that's all we're asking for. Okay, very interesting. Thank you very much indeed for your time today.